after understanding the nonlinear differential equation with its first method and second method where the first method was the exact differential equation method and the second one was the separable variables met equation method now we are going to do the third method which is the last method uh, for solving the nonlinear differential equations this is known as the Bernoulli's equation method because it was forwarded by a Swiss mathematician whose name was Jacob Bernoulli and he gave it in 17th century and this was his lifespan so it's a certain type of nonlinear differential equation why it is called certain type we will see in this standard form of it here you can see we are mentioning the functional form that dy over dt is equal to h y comma t it means that derivative over time of this variable is a function of y and t these two variables so it is the general form however when we write it in a specific form it will look like this there is dy over dt which is a usual derivative part of a differential equation and then the y variable is there however there is r coefficient instead of uh, any other coefficient here r has its own specification we will see in the box below but we have another term here which is unusual that is y is appearing again and it is appearing with a certain power that is m and it also has a coefficient which is t in this case so now let's unravel these coefficients that is r and t and also let's understand the way, uh, the power m so the first term is as it is y is the variable and it has power 1 so this is to be noted whereas the power here of y is m and the value of m is neither 0 nor 1 this is a condition it cannot be violated and we will see what happen uh, what happens whenever we violate it whereas the r uh, coefficient is actually a function in terms of time so it will be developed in terms of time as we will see uh, as we see some uh, numerical examples of it this is capital T which is the function of time again it is based on variable time so the problem is that m has a certain part that is 0 and 1 it cannot be it cannot be 0 and 1 it is any other value than 0 and 1 so r was a function in terms of time t was a function in terms of time again t and m was considered to be uh, neither 0 nor m1 so if we violate this condition we will uh, not get a Bernoulli's equation so if these conditions are met we get a Bernoulli equation so what is that what happens when m is not equal to 0 and uh, m is when m is equal to 0 and when m is equal to 1 this is a uh, uh, undesired situation that we want to address so let m is equal to 0 we I do it it will be equal to this y raised to the power 0 is 1 so y will disappear and we will be left with this equation we just note this and let's come to the other possibility when m uh, is equal to 1 this will be y raised to the power 1 which will be this and the final result will be this uh, you can do this calculation simple algebra uh, we can do and after doing this simple algebra you can uh, come to these equations so both of these equations are showing that it is a linear differential equation because the power of y is 1 here the power of y is 1 again it doesn't matter what the coefficient is because it is the coefficient however the variable power is 1 that is the value of the power of dependent variable that is y so we are talking about non linear differential equations the third method of which we are trying to learn so we should not be uh, developing a linear differential equation instead we should try to develop a non linear differential equation and if uh, it has a power which is neither 0 nor 1 we will get a Bernoulli's differential equation so uh, how we can solve it uh, the basic idea behind it is that Bernoulli equation is reduced to 
a linear form of the differential equation and we are well familiar of how to solve the linear form it is easy for us so this is why we try to linearize it and how we can do this it it has a certain development that we are going to see so we are going to reduce it to the linear form we know that this is the standard form and in the standard form the bone of contention or the thing that causes us trouble is this because this is what makes it a nonlinear differential equation because the power of y is m which is neither 0 nor 1 so we want to avoid this situation so we are going to focus on y raised to the power m uh, as it is mentioned here same thing that I told you we reduce it to 1 by self dividing right so if I self divide it it becomes this and it also appears on the other side of the equation it gets divided and you know disappears from this side as you can see no more however the division happens uh, with this term and with this term as you can see this term reduces to this and this term becomes this um, after simplification um, you know we are gathering the values of y uh, power of m uh, power of y will be m and when we reciprocalize it becomes minus m and here again y power m becomes y raised to the power minus m when we reciprocalize it so the purpose of writing it in this way is to facilitate our uh, standard form because you can see that this is turning into a first order differential equation because the uh, power is uh, going to be 1 but till now it's not 1 we are going to make it 1 so we have to be clear about it that this is just the uh, beginning of the process of making it one moreover this is also something which is not there in the standard form we only have the derivative term and not any uh, co uh, coefficient other than one but how we can do this we have to do two substitutions because y raised to the power one minus m is here this is one thing that we need to substitute as well as this coefficient is also here and we uh, have a power of it that is y raised to the power minus m so substitution 1 will help us to get substitution 2 uh, as you can see this is substitution 1 and once we do this we will be able to do this as well so uh, these are the box terms that we are going to substitute now let's see in order to make it linear we are going to substitute so let's talk about the substitution 1 it is here introducing a shorthand notation z for this so instead of writing y raised to the power 1 minus m if i write z it has a power of 1 z has a power of 1 so uh, the nonlinear term of y will be substituted with a linear term of z so this is nonlinear and it will be converted into a linear term so by using an another another variable which is an auxiliary variable which is not the main variable we are able to substitute and linearize the uh, first term for substitution one however the other side is also to be addressed where there was uh, non-linear component so we know that z depends upon y this new variable as you can see z is a function of y from this equation you can see that y determines z and which further depends on t and we know that y is also dependent upon t so there is an indirect dependence that is from t to y and then y to z and for that we can write it that z depends upon y and then y further depends on t when we combine these two we get this form that i have also mentioned here so uh, uh, t affects y and y affects z when we have indirect dependence we use the chain rule and in the chain rule you know that t is going to affect y and y is going to affect z so now we try to put some values if we have um, this is dy dz over dt that is differential term of the new equation the new equation will be z as a function of t because we are replacing y so the equation will be z in terms of t and y will be replaced for the time being and on the other side th there is y as a function of t you know that the original equation was in terms of y 
so uh, this is the original equation that we have this is not new this is given or original equation so the original equation its derivative is present here the effect of t on y so this is that middle term of the chain rule that shows that y affects z so for that i can easily use this equation that i started my assumption with here you can see this assumption is there that z depends upon y and it is equal to y raised to the power 1 minus m so uh, when y changes z should change and we can do this calculation very easily by the use of derivative this is the given equation we differentiate with respect to y so the derivative of it will be equal to this when we take the derivative the value of z is this and um, its derivative is something you can easily do so it's a small diy for you do it yourself and we get the value of dz over dy so this value is now obtained and we are going to substitute it in the chain rule the chain rule was this in which we have found the value of dz over dy and after substitution it becomes this and now we have this certain form this certain form can be rearranged because um, i have to substitute whatever is uh, substitutable so let's see the original equation where we have to do the substitution um, coming back to that point I should remember that the substitution 2 is y raised to the power minus m into dy over dt. So if I can develop the uh, value of this expression, then it will be easily substituted. So <coughs> let me see the result that I just obtained. This is the result that I obtained and in, in this result this is something that I can substitute however this is additional so I shifted it to the left hand side and now you can see it is on the left hand side reciprocalized and this is that you know value that I can substitute now I am ready for both that is substitution 1 and substitution 2 both of them are in their ideal form so let's see that uh, how we can substitute these values combining substitution 1 and 2 this was substitution 1 this was substitution 2 and you can see we have written the values as we have developed those values and after writing them in the boxes it is very much clear so we can now simplify them and write them in some consolidated form in the first step I've gotten rid of these boxes and the resulting form is this and now uh, the logical thing to do is to take the LCM and I have taken the LCM here of the symbolic term which is also something that you already know so you can pause the video and see that how the LCM is taken so a little bit of DIY and then DZ plus this now what, I've, what we have done is we have shifted this to the other side and you know it, it comes here now uh, what we can observe is that uh, there is a common thing 1 minus m and dt these are the two things that are common in these two terms so this is why I have brought it on the left hand side the sign of uh, it turned negative and then I took the common in this step and therefore dt was taken as a common factor 1 minus m was also taken as a common factor and we were left with this in the middle so in this way it was not just a reckless mathematics it was aimed at an objective and that was to separate dz from dt and you can clearly see that it is happening here and this makes it a kind of non-linear or linear differential equation in this case it is not showing its true non-linearity because the power of the variable involved z is 1 and but you know that z is equal to y raised to the power 1 minus m so this means that uh, the non-linearity is hidden and we are seeing the non-linearity here so this uh, you know 
is something that we wanted. The process of Bernoulli's equation is achieved. That now we have a linearized uh, linear uh, differential equation. Uh, this is dt and this is the coefficient of dt which is quite lengthy. However, it is actually the coefficient and um, uh, you have z here instead of y as you can see z is present here instead of y. So, we have gotten rid of y temporarily, but we will bring it back because the given equation was in terms of y. So, the answer should be um, you know y in terms of y and this is only just a auxiliary variable. that is here just for help, but we will come back to y after our purpose is fulfilled. So, this is the linearized form of the Bernoulli equation. Now, it is linearized in terms of z. So, uh, this is how we can understand the background of Bernoulli's equation which is actually a non-linear differential equation and we linearize it and we can um, you know use this form which is developed here and we can solve any numerical situation as well as we can also apply some economic uh, model uh, to this uh, kind of non-linear differential equation to come up with something meaningful. Thank you.